Hey guys, welcome back and let's start our video lecture for today. A few announcements before we start. We do have a quiz tomorrow, so make sure you're studying for that. That's on the unit circle values and um, make sure you finish that homework. That's the half sheet. So let's go ahead and get started. So today what we're covering is inverse functions. So you remember that we had inverse functions before uh, with logs and with uh, exponentials. So pretty much what an inverse function is, is a function that undoes another function. So over here we have an example of a function f of x. Its inverse is f of x. So let's say f, our function, assigns x and x goes into f and it gives us y. Well what f of x pretty much, what the inverse of f of x pretty much is, is if you put an inverse into f of x, that's going to be the answer of f and that's going to give you what you originally inputted for f. So they're going to undo each other. Um, one way we can think about this with trigonometry is we have sine, cosine, and tangent. And usually we can plug in an angle measure into sine and cosine and we'll get a, uh, a coordinate or a length, a ratio. Um, in sine, for example, if we look at the unit circle and we have a degree measure for sine, uh, it gives us the y coordinate for that point. Well, with inverse functions, inverse trig functions can be used to find the angle. So, um, make sure you write that. It's used to find the angle. So, definitely here is where it kind of switches up because before we've been always having the angle before. We've had sine and we've had an angle and we've looked for a point. We've looked for the y coordinate or the x coordinate. From now on, if we use an inverse function, then inverse functions, uh, we, it'll tell us where the angle is. So what is the angle with the sign, the coordinate already assigned to us? So the way we write this is, say we have y equals sine of theta. Well, we can find theta by having the inverse of sine, and that's a y, and that just the y just indicates an input. So you don't need to worry too much about um, whether that's a y coordinate or an x coordinate. That's just the input. Then you have y equals cosine of theta. So if we want to find the angle theta, theta is going to equal cosine inverse and then of our input y. And then for tan, if we want to find the theta, then that's going to be tangent inverse of whatever your input is. And these functions are really easily found on your calculator. We're going to go through it in class, but um, the inverse trig, trig functions are those sine, cosine, and tangent keys. If you press second sine or second cosine or second tangent, you'll be able to pull up those uh, the inverse functions. So the inverse functions finds the angle measure, whereas the normal functions finds the length or the coordinate for you. So let's look at a few examples on our note sheets. So we have sine of theta equals 0.57. So pretty much this is saying that we don't know what theta is, but we do know that opposite over hypotenuse, which is what sine is, equals 0.57. So if I wanted to find the um, the accurate the accurate angle measure for this, I could do sine inverse, and then I'd plug in the actual ratio. And so what this is going to give me once I plug it in my calculator is it's going to give me theta. It's going to give me what that angle measure is. So the out so if you want to think about it, the input of my function uh, is the output. That output becomes the input of my inverse, which then becomes the output. So cosine of theta equals 3 over 4. Similarly, I know that cosine is SOKOTOA. That's adjacent over hypotenuse. So 3 over 4 is my adjacent over my hypotenuse, but I don't know what my theta is. So I'm going to press cosine inverse 
theta, I'm sorry, cosine inverse 3 over 4, and that's going to equal my theta. So if I plug in cosine inverse of 3 over 4, that's going to give me my theta. If I want to do tangent, I know that tangent is opposite over adjacent. So if I want to find out what that is, I'm going to do tangent inverse of 5 over 3, and that's going to give me my theta. And then for cosine, if I want to find out what is that angle, I know that the ratio for cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's the ratio right there. It says it equals two-thirds. So if I wanted to find out what that angle equals, I'd do cosine inverse of 2 over 3. And that would give me my theta. All right. So in class, we can, we're going to go over this, and you can plug it in your calculator and actually get some experience. So let's say we were solving for an angle measure. So if we were solving for an angle measure, we want to um, actually use the trigonometric functions that are appropriate. So right now, step one, set up an appropriate trig function using the information we're given. Well, the information we're given is this is our theta right here. And then it gives us two side lengths. So let's see what side lengths it gives us so we can figure out what this theta is because we want to find out what that theta is. Well, we know the opposite of theta and we know the adjacent of theta. So if I just think about my trigonometric functions, if I have opposite and adjacent, what ratio am I going to use? Tangent. So usually if I had tangent, I'd, use, I'd have this angle, but I don't know this angle. I want to find out what that angle is. So if I want to find out what that angle is, then I can do tangent inverse of, well, what's my opposite? That's 30 over 20. And technically, we can even type into our calculator, since this is essentially the same thing, tangent of 3 over 2. And that will give us what that theta is. It'll tell us what that theta is. So as before we use sine, cosine, and tangent to solve for a certain side, now we're using it to solve for a theta because we're using the inverse. All right, let's try one more. So notice this is a right triangle. So we have our theta right there. So our first piece of information right now is, OK, I have a theta that's right here. So I'm going to look at what pieces of information I have to use the trig function. So I have opposite, and I have 32, which is it's across from the right angle, so it, that's the hypotenuse. So I have opposite and a hypotenuse. Think about the trig function that this applies to. Sine. So I know that I'm going to use sine. Now I'm looking for the angle. I'm not looking for a measure. I'm looking for an angle. So if I'm looking for an angle then that means I'm going to use the inverse of sine. So I'm going to use sine inverse of opposite over hypotenuse. My opposite is 17 over my hypotenuse of 32. And that would give me theta. And right now I don't have a calculator on me, but if you type this in the calculator, you would get what theta is. And if your calculator is in radians mode, it will tell you what it would, it would be in radians. And you could convert to get to degrees if you'd like. All right, these last two I want you to do by yourself. Um, so go ahead and just set up the problem. So see that, you know, this should be actually a right triangle if it's not already on your sheet. See that, okay, this is a right triangle. I know what this is. So what ratio am I going to use and how would I solve for this angle? And then solve for x at when you're done and solving for x is just the Pythagorean theorem so you have this one I'm just gonna help you out on this one notice that I have a theta right here notice that I have a 12 which is opposite and a 14 which is adjacent so I have an opposite and adjacent think about what trig function you're gonna use and then in this one I have my theta right here and then you're gonna do the same Pythagorean theorem when you're done to find out what your 
this side is. Alright, have a great day guys and make sure to study for that quiz. See ya.